spinal fracture, five spinal fractures. Both of his arms were sticking out of his bones. Uh, so back, head, his lungs were punctured. His brain was swelling. The, he wasn't supposed to live. He is a miracle of miracles. And we spent 45 days at Tampa General. But while we were in the hospital, I think day two, Logan was on a ventilator and his brother Gavin got discharged from that private school as well. And Gavin is, I, I know my boys. And if I didn't get them help and services right away and figure things out that I would have two boys in the hospital or worse. And so I got on the interweb and looked up this agency of persons with disabilities and their crisis waiver process. And within two weeks started the process of crisis applications with the boys. Um, and from our very first phone call, uh, I was made very aware that there was some opportunities for growth with this agency and that this is gonna be something that I have to let go of and uh, learn about before I get snappy. I'm a redhead. I don't know if you guys can see me, but I, I naturally by default, I'm not a cool, calm, collective chick. Um, and Grace held me through that time because day after day, phone call after phone call, email after email until 385 days did Logan and Gavin get approved for services through the crisis waiver? Um, and I've never done any sort of advocacy. What I did was half halfway through the waiting period, um, I one of my girlfriends said, hey, there's a meeting tomorrow at the local courthouse where all the people you need to talk to that can help you will be all in front of you. Just tell them what you're telling me and we'll see. And so I went to what I now know is a legislative delegation meeting. Um, and that is a meeting that takes place before session where constituents can go talk to their local area reps and senator um, about any issue. Does it, you know, like HOAs, education, whatever your, your topic is. And so I went before this group of saving big, very important people and said, hey, uh, I've been trying to do, uh, I've been trying to get my boys on the crisis waiver for 10 months now. And I think we're kind of through, but as I've gone through this process, I've thought of a lot of common sense solutions on how to, how to prevent future families from going through this. Um, and representative Lauren Mello, uh, invited me back to her office. We chatted and I was very nervous about, you know, I'm talking to a politician, you know, these people are cheats and liars and all the things. And, I, uh, unbelievably positive, positive experience. I talked to a mom. I didn't talk to a politician. I didn't have any sort of experience in the way, like, like no experience in the waiver, except for the, the fight I was currently going through, um, and established a relationship with representative Mello. And let's see, uh, so representative Mello and our, our local Senator, which is our Senate, uh, president Pasadomo, both of their offices advocated for my voice on behalf of getting onto services. And four months later, we got there. Um, and what, what Lauren, what representative Mello said to me was so amazing. She said, Steph, I want to help you with these solutions and these other families, but I'm going to help you first. And then once we're done with that, I want you to come back with me with like a little bit more specifics of what those common sense solutions are. Um, and I took that very seriously because at 385 days with no help and I, every night. I, I, I didn't sleep. I don't know how I got through that. That was a year of like literally no sleep and chaos. Um, but I, every night I thought of everyone else and what they're going to go through and that this, this can't be forever. So I began thinking on ideas uh, and started writing them down, started studying law, which like a little extra, but uh I, I wrote I wrote some language and had a different presentation this year at our legislative delegation meeting. And a week 
after that delegation meeting, a couple other parents in our community said that they were experiencing issues with getting their kids help and services and wanted to know what are the best ways to to advocate. And so I sat down with 10 parents in August of this year. And actually, Melissa Mazeda is a support coordinator. And she actually, she emailed me and said, hey, we need to get parents together um, because things are things need needed need lobbyists we don't have one and you guys are it so so we met in Collier and after I met in Collier I asked all the families how many of you all have met with a legislator ever about anything or who are they and you know very normally like I didn't know no one knew in the room and so we decided that it would be a good idea to figure out how to educate ourselves on who we talk to um, and the best way to go about that. And thus started a really cool movement thing that's happened. It's called We the People, By the People, For All the People. So it's a mouthful, uh, but those are really important things because our loved ones are um, valued American citizens, residents of Florida, and they, they need to be counted. Um, so We the People, By the People is now... Between the email list, the Facebook, the phone calls, the Zooms, all the things, we got about 1,100 people who have actively been a part of every legislative delegation meeting this session and uh, gone and met with their representatives with confidence, people who were like, you're crazy. We're not going to talk to these people for five minutes. They're not going to listen to us. And and the good news is that they have. Um, and so... The point of my story is to kind of illustrate that advocacy is not something you have to be Alan Abramowitz to do. Advocacy is is us. It's our story. And what we what we've um, walked through as a group is the the importance of our legislators understanding that we're not an I budget number. We're not a we're not a line item, but human beings. Um, and there needs to be a personal connection because clearly there's been a disconnect um, since uh, the, the waiver really hasn't been serviced uh, since Jeb Bush. And um, we started walking families through how do we go, how do we regurgitate 25 years of issues into a five minute meeting? And one of the things we came up with is a simple fill in the blank form. Um, hi, my name is, I live in this area. I'm on the waiver. I'm on the wait list or I don't, or none of those things. And some pictures, uh, some fun facts, some icebreakers, because sometimes we get nervous when we do new things. And uh, it's always good to have a point of, point of common interest. And then what do you want to share with your local legislator? And a little small paragraph which gave families a, a physical tool to bring to their legislators and have a, a talking piece. Um, and many of the families didn't get a five minute meeting, they got a 45 minute meeting. I mean, when you make that personal connection, it's unbelievably powerful in whatever issue it is. Uh, but, you know, individuals, they, uh, parents, caregivers we are the, the ones that are the experts on on the gaps and the challenges and the needs um and so it's vitally important that we use our voice and uh that is more or less my 45 minutes but here's what i i want to ask because i don't know you people which is exciting hi um can somebody, has anybody had experience advocating for um, anything uh, good, bad, ugly, and uh, want to share that, want to share that? Anybody have advocacy meet with a legislator? Amanda, Alan, you don't count. <laughs> I will, uh, and, and, and AB too, you don't count. I know you. So I'm going to start calling names. Uh, I also know Lily, you can't be on this. I'm going to go straight to who's Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson, are you here? I am indeed here. 
Hey, Gary Johnson. I got a question. Have Have you ever advocated? I have not really, and I've not spoken to anyone in the legislature. Um, I tend to speak with a representative um, that could help Kyle, my son Kyle, who's got uh, autism and uh, Downs, and he's 31 now, or will be 31 in, on Sunday. And, um, and it, we talk with the representative uh, to, rep to help us with, uh, you know, the issues that he has and uh, to represent him uh, relative to Loveland. And he loves Loveland. So, but I've never talked to any legislators. So you're at, is that Sarasota, right? You're in Sarasota County? Uh, it's in Sarasota County. I live in Venice. Okay. Um, so the, the, the process is, is pretty, pretty simple when it comes to talking to legislators. Uh, there, there's no wrong answer here. I, I'm winging this by the way. Um, have you like have you uh do you have hesitations about talking to legislators or is there just uh I don't know like what do they do try to think of where I go with this because I don't know uh, uh where everybody's at for me it, no I've not I've not hesitated I've just not seen a a need right now uh what we want accomplished for Kyle has been accomplished and uh, continues to grow. And so, uh, you know, we just keep on going. I think that's awesome for legislators to know for the, everyone else that wants to be like Kyle and Gary. Um, so it's, it's simple as a conversation And you know, at this point, uh, you know, they're, they're mostly in Tallahassee, uh, but, Points of contact are, are always a good thing. If you called your local office and said, hey, I'm Gary Johnson. My son, Kyle, is at Loveland Center. And I know that there's families in need. And I just want you to know that it, he's on the waiver. The, Kyle's on the waiver. Uh, actually, he's not. Oh, how come? I'm sorry, my wife just corrected me. She said, yes, he is on a waiver. <laughs> okay. So that's all right. I totally get that. The waiver is like a what? Um so so the waiver is a is a lot uh that the med waiver is a lot of how how individuals pay for services. And Kyle is clearly doing really well. You guys are happy, and we want to see that for to maintain. Um as far as what's gone on with the the med waiver to to back up a little bit um there are 22 plus thousand people on the wait list or pre-enrollment list as it's newly named waiting for services uh some of our families have wait times up to 25 years you know 10 and above uh that in florida in florida we have 22,000 people waiting for services and have been waiting for years and that our wait list was cleared when Jeb Bush was our governor and more or less since then it's just stacked and stacked. We have 35 plus thousand individuals that are being served on the waiver. Um, but what's happened a lot is things like companion care and um, adult day training centers and group homes and uh, nursing and all of the services related, these providers have not been paid even close to to livable wages. So our, in Florida, we have a barren provider pool. And the way that our waiver works is that it's the, the legislators get to decide how it's funded. So if uh, the legislators want to give us a dollar or take Two billion away. That is, that that is the two. Those are our decision makers. And what's really disheartening in the current present state is Florida is 49th 
for for, for funding uh, for our, our the waiver. And um, that's apparent in our wait list. That's apparent in the people that are receiving services that can't get access to certain services. Um, and it's really important for our legislators to see where it works um, because you you know you want to put you you want to throw money into something that works and clearly so as far as as I'm sorry to pick on you Gary uh but meeting with legislators for you is is kind of like a wonderful hey just want you to know Loveland Center has kicked booty for my family has changed our world and that is a, a large in part to do to the waiver and we just want to see it continue simple things like that. It has been what other families have done, and then the and then bills that have come forward. Legislators then come back to us parents and say, "Oh, hey, Gary, Gary Johnson, you live in Venice and go to Loveland, right? Hey, there's this new thing going on with transportation, and we want to know what do you think about disability disadvantaged transportation? Something that's an example. Um, things like that have been happening, and that is really great." for the whole, and then when there's a snafu, if there's something that happens with funding, you have the, the you have somebody uh, that's able to advocate for you. Like, like in my case, I was able to talk to my local representative and have continued, like it has not been a dream in the park since we've um, gotten onto the waiver. There, there's significant issues with, pro with providers. Um, and I've been able to go back to my local rep and be like, hey, this is what's going on. Can you can you look into this? And things happen a lot faster when you've got legislators asking questions instead of parents. Um, so thank you, Gary. I, I, I just wanted to give like a real example on how simple advocacy can be. It can be incredibly complex. Uh, and that's what experts like the Ark of Florida are here for. A family cafe uh, does a meeting where they talk about legislative matters. There are some lobbyists in in developmental disabilities, but the truth is there's not a whole lot of money to be made. So really families have to be the lobbyists. And in every civil rights movement in history, uh, it's been the families, it's been the individuals, it's been the people that are affected that can can educate legislators on the needs to change um i've talked a well, lot about yeah go ahead looks like i need to talk to a legislator yes and i have amanda i have handy dandy amanda uh we have a list of all the legislators uh that serve on like health and human service that that, that serve our people on their committees we have their emails their phone numbers and we'll put that in the chat um, I also so, put the link, the face or the website um, link into the chat where um, you can find our weekly Zoom meeting and the yeah. link to share your story. And also um, it has the link to connect you with our Facebook group as well. And a few uh, our YouTube channel, all the we, things. Yeah, we're we we've been busy the last three months it's pretty it's 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 pretty incredible amanda you know i'd like amanda can you share you know your connection to advocacy what what's gone on and uh how, how you're in the fold now sure yeah so um i have uh melissa mazita to thank and actually i have alan to thank because if it wasn't for a committee that he put together like a year ago, um, I wouldn't have met Melissa and we wouldn't have chatted and she wouldn't have realized that I, uh, I'm i not afraid to talk to anyone. And <laughs> so- about, about who? About my son, Jaden, sorry, thanks. <laughs> um, so my son, Jaden, he just turned 15. Um, about a year ago, I made the decision that um, he was he was at the point where he needed residential facility, uh, residential care, rather. Um, most importantly, 24-hour awake care. Um, and so I finally, in March 
of last year, I reached out to APD because I thought that they would be a partner. And that was right after Jaden tried to burn your house down, right? Right. Yeah. Actually, the I think it was a week or two before the fire that uh, that I had reached out to them, but he had severe behaviors. Um, but then I, you know, he decided on the night before St. Patrick's Day to wake up in the middle of the night, and we had forgotten to take a knob off of our gas stove which ultimately turned into a fire. And thankfully, um, my husband was able to put it out. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here today. And um, say hi, Jaden. So, yeah, hey, um, <laughs> he's trying to get me up. <laughs> but um, so we got the denial letter in June. And then I... Um, was talking to everyone and they suggested I reach out to my state representative and I actually ended up going to a meeting that he was a speaker at um and I knew I was lucky enough to have known him prior to him becoming uh, our state representative um so it was easier a little bit for me to talk with him um but I told him the story and I saw his face drop and he said, get or talk to my, my district aide who has now become my best friend. I talk to her on a weekly basis now. Um, but she kept sending me resources. Um, and those resources kept saying, Hey, have you talked to APD? And I said, uh -huh. so anyway, I get the denial letter. Um, and they denied for multiple reasons. And I told my representative, I said, I've talked to everybody and, and no one can help. And then Melissa suggested or told me about this group that was just starting a grassroots movement that of families that are going to talk to their legislators. And I said, buddy, I'm in. So um, because clearly from from my experience and the experience of others, I realized the change needed to happen. And I wanted to be a part of it. So then we got our approval in November after my district aide had reached out to her legislative affairs folks. And I don't know who called who or what happened in the background, but <laughs> we we won that that first battle. Um, and I I really have the We the People group to thank ultimately because I ended up speaking at our delegation meeting in Putnam. I was the only one <laughs> from from our group um, to Tell speak. Pro tip. What's your pro tip? Oh, yes, my pro tip. So, um, yes, I had three minutes to speak. But if you cry, <laughs> they stop the clock. <laughs> so I got seven minutes. But I did get... Um, a good some good follow-up questions from my state senator because he he asked he said why why did they deny you so i told them and um one of the reasons was because i didn't have any police reports baker act commitments or dcf involvement which is not part of the statute so um i said so ultimately i'm being penalized for being a good mom and not traumatizing my kid and I think that's what, what, what got them. So uh, the state sen or state senator, uh, Senator Hudson, asked me to connect with his uh, uh, legislative aide and keep them updated. And so I sent them all the things. And by this time, Stephanie had made my little my story one pager about Jaden. Um, and about what we had been going through. So I sent that to them. Um, and so here we are. And we're we're fighting the good fight for for families that that don't know what's out there and we want to try to fix the system because it's not completely broken, but there's definitely room for improvement. Well, I have lots of room. I what I love about your story in particular is you kind of came into the group saying, 
you know, I've tried all these things and I don't know about a legislative delegation meeting. Like I remember you talked, like I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to say things right. And this is so overwhelming. And then I, I'd like you to share after you spoke, like describe the difference. Oh my God. Like I felt like I had just won the biggest race of my life. <laughs> like I had crossed the finish line after doing, you know, a whole marathon. I just elated. The weight was lifted. I felt like, I felt like I, I connected with them. Um, like somebody was actually listening, you know, because for months of going back and forth and sending in documents and doing all the things I was asked to do, I, it, I still felt like nobody's listening. <laughs> so, um, the, what I have found though, is our legislators want to help and they don't know what they don't know. So it's our job, the experts in our field, which is raising our children to let them know, you know, if you're not directly, you know, impacted by someone with a developmental disability, you don't know. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and shared my story or just other stories and they're like, oh my gosh, I had, I had no idea that was even a thing. So it's just, it's spreading the awareness and spreading the awareness to the people who actually make the decisions that affect our lives. And that's what's important because they're the ones that say yay or nay, right? We, we don't have any power except to tell our story and tell our truth so that they understand when they're looking at this bill, how it will affect us. Stay funny. That is, that is power. Huh? That is power. I am not hearing. Very quick, I, I just want to encourage the participants to give your email to either Amanda or Stephanie so that they can include you in the um, mailing list because we uh, meet together Fridays, but they do a very good job reminding us if it is at 2 p.m. or at 6 p.m. because we see switch uh, of time also. Um, Many of us are going to Tallahassee for the autism awareness uh, January, I mean, sorry, February 6th and February 7th is the DD day. Um, so you might want to join us uh, in going to the Capitol. And also I only wanted uh, to share with Gary um, that our, uh, um, with anyone, if there's uh, any other person in the call uh, of Sarasota County, Representative Buchanan with his A, Thomas Sabe Sabe Saavedra, is in Northport. He is one of our decision makers. Uh, one point that we share is that we should not underestimate the power of the AIDS because definitely they will open the door. So if they give you the opportunity to meet with them, do not reject that opportunity. Just uh, meet with them and eventually they will let you in uh, to the legislator because as Stephanie and Amanda have shared, it's about making a relationship with them. Another one is Senator Gruters in Sarasota and his aide is flat and um, Alan just posted a few minutes ago the link where you can find who are your representative? And the last one, well, there's another one, but the other one is Michael Grant. And I would like Stephanie, if you can, uh, Michael Grant was the representative that asked you to go back. You remember in the Sarasota delegation meeting, he asked you to come back. He is in Punta Gorda in Charlotte County. Oh, oh, Representative Grant? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Rep both of those I didn't know that they were both in in Gary's area because you know Florida's big but yeah 
really interested uh, legislators. And um, I want to go through, I created for for another thing that another hat that I wear, um, if you've never met with your legislators, like a walkthrough, can I, Becca, can I share my screen? No. I think I just made you the host, so you should be able to. Now I can share my screen. So I wanted to real quick, uh, thank you, Heavy. Uh, I, at the end here, I'll put a bunch of uh, information in the chat for everyone. Um, but I want to go back to what to what what Amanda was saying, and as far as she was just like me, and she, it, my story, her story, it, it has echoed through every other uh, family that's never done anything like this, where you go from what's the point? I have so much going on in my life. This is a waste of my time. To uh, feeling hopeless or or like nothing's going to get better. And putting that energy out by by literally just saying, "Hey, decision maker, this is what my story is. This is what's going on." The level of the empowerment shift is unbelievable. It's like the best high you've ever been on because you are doing something with something that you know would have not gone anywhere without you. And it's it's uh it's incredibly. It, it gives energy. It doesn't take it away. Like a lot of the things that we do and it, it just feels so draining. This is different. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that, but, uh, like everyone else, it's, it's, it's incredibly nerve wracking to go meet politicians. They, most of us maybe see them on TV when they do something real scandalous and that's about it. Um, but they are for our people and, and we don't really have we don't, we don't have the freedom for other choices here for our people. Those are the people we need to talk to and form relationships because they make the decisions that affect the rest of their lives. Um, and the more I learn, the more I see how much that's affected in so many areas. So anyways, uh, we're just going to walk through this together and feel free to chime in, uh, anyone. I like, I'm a big participation fan. So, uh, hey, have you never met with legislators? Here are seven steps to get you through a successful meeting. Um, number one, you got to make an appointment, but they don't make that super easy to figure out. So you can go uh, make go to the, the link that Alan said, and it, it says, contact your representative. Send an email, and what you, the, the email is super simple. Uh, hi, rep we'll go with Grant because somebody said his name. Hi, Representative Grant. My name's Gary Johnson. I am a constituent. I live in uh, Sarasota County, and I would like to speak with you about my son with developmental disabilities. I am available to speak on Mondays and Fridays between these times or whatever the availability is, or you could leave it open. I'd just like to schedule an appointment to you. It's really important that they know that you're their constituent. And when we're talking about talking to legislators, it's super important to find your local guys. Like, I don't reach out to people in other areas of the state because I, I elected Senator Pasadomo. I, have, I run into Representative Lauren Mello, and there are, that's, that's their job is to represent us at that local, local level. And then this second part of number one came from Senator Pasadomo. Just so you all know, when I showed her this, she was like, this is liquid gold. If people would just follow this, they will have a successful <laughs> appointment and, and thereafter. But what she added and EB just uh, uh, touched on it, um, the aid. The aid is your golden ticket. They are the gatekeepers. So if you get that call and they say, hey, you know what? Representative Grant is not gonna have appointment for 16 months, but if you wanna meet with his aide, um, the answer is yes, yes, please. Um, because really they do a lot of the work. So they're intimately involved in all the issues. And if they like you, then they're gonna pass you through to the representative. Um, so that, part to making the appointment 
if it comes with an aid, yeah, buddy. Like that's a that's that people get turned off by that, but that's okay. Um, arrive ten minutes early. So things are chaotic in uh politics land and legislator land. They do write and amend and deal with constituent services all day, 365 days a year. And then in session, they're in Tallahassee for the majority of that time. So they get stuff that comes up and emergencies happen, be there 10 minutes early. They've got a lot of stuff going on. And this one, I want to make this number one, but I tried to go in order. Thank them with enthusiasm. Having gratitude for their time, even if the re response to you isn't positive. Thank you for your time. Sometimes I look at it as no, and I have heard no a lot, but no is really not right now. That's how I take it. If you say no to me, that means not today. Um, but these people are going to represent you for up to eight years. So it's a good idea, even if you're not happy with the results to be extremely grateful for for their time and eat that doing that will maybe pin something in their mind to like wait a second that person handled uh not great news with respect uh and and maybe we will help them i, I haven't really seen that go sideways at, at once gratitude is good for everything and then this one's hard and if you've noticed i'm yaki Share your share your issue and your topic, and but make it personal. Remember your ABCs: accuracy. Don't talk facts that you don't know. They, 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 accuracy is important. Brevity, meaning be quick and make your points clear. What I did is I wrote down everything that I wanted to say the night before, because it was jarbled, and I was able to. Uh, focus my messaging now we have that one pager so y'all don't have to worry about that um it, it really helps to to keep it concise because if you bring up 55 things that are going on in your world that you want to have fixed you're gonna lose like like if you were talking to anybody else they lose we, we all lose attention um and then this one this one is, is just as important you gotta ask you gotta ask can we count on your support the answer may be yes. It's been more yes this session than it's been no. Um, but you got you got to make the ask um, because that puts them on notice. And then again, think of with enthusiasm after you're done, follow up. The idea is to create a relationship with them. Um, so you know, send them a thank you card. I I went uh, old school. I I love getting old fashioned cards. Uh, it makes a difference to me when. That means someone really spent the time, but our lives are insane. So if you don't do that, like, don't worry. An email will work after you meet with them. Hey, thank you, Representative Grant. Today we, we discussed my son Kyle and how wonderful the Loveland program is. We want to see this program continue. We want their providers to be paid for and uh, just really appreciate your time listening to me today. Thanks so much, Gary Johnson. And those seven steps really are like gravy and as far as taking the the pain of not knowing what to expect into it. Um, advocacy is not something I wanted to sign up for. I, I in fact I, I, I'm a I wanted an identity. I didn't want to be. <laughs> the the disability mom but the the raw truth is is that i am the disability mom and we don't really have a choice but to advocate for our kids and it's not just at the state level this happens whether your kid is three or 90 and you're in schools or you're in a hospital or you're at the grocery store you are, we are constantly having to to advocate uh the state legislator why we're doing this in january is because for 60 days, starting last Tuesday, the the, eight, the 9th, so January 9th through March 8th, uh, our state legislators are all gathered up in Tallahassee and making very important decisions that will affect all of our lives right now. They have 60 days to crank out changes. Um, 
funding uh, all of all of these elements and it is the wild west when session starts there's negotiations and things that started out clean get a little mucky and if there aren't families saying oh wait hey hold on uh this is what we talked about or this is why you know so like for my example um it's really important to me that families are able to access um crisis services before 45 days or certainly before 385 days so right now there's some language out there revi revising it um, but it's important to just keep them in touch with who you are uh who what who your guys are what your story is um and it, it will make it a significant impact in session but one session's over it doesn't mean that that we stop talking we're always advocating and I, I want families. I, I'm I'm in this. I I'm you know 250 percent into this for the sole reason that I spent over a year alone, feeling like nobody else understood what I was going through. No one cared about my family, and um, it was my hunch that I wasn't the only one feeling that way. And uh, I certainly not. Uh, the advocating for yourself for your family is is the way to take the power back um and it's been really successful so i've babbled for like 45 straight minutes and i want to i want everybody to say hello and if you could turn your camera on uh let's do that if you can't you know then you can't but we don't care what you look like we're you know we're all parents hi av oh look at this everybody's coming on all right now I made you all participate and use your mouth. Anybody want to talk questions? As always, I want to talk. Stephanie, can you share the page of the bill of the bills that are being worked during this legislative session, please? Yes, ma'am. I'll start sending that stuff. Alan, who are you? What's that? Hi, Alan. Hey there. Hey, what do you feel? How do you feel about advocacy? Uh, Who are first you? of all, I have a child with autism. Uh, he has Asperger's, and uh, my wife does all the advocacy in our family. <laughs> She's really good at that. But uh, he's independent, so it's been uh, it's been. Uh, easy for me going to work all the time, but uh, I really got into advocacy because uh, I represented foster kids and a lot of foster kids, I mean, as an attorney, a lot of foster kids have um, disabilities. In fact, uh, you know, I, when I was uh, over the statewide guardian lighting program, uh, we started having a yearly conference for just representing people with uh, disabilities. And, uh, you know, when they kept all those kids in the nursing homes, uh, I visited every one of them in Brevard and Broward County and in, uh, and in uh, Pas Pinellas County or Pasco County yeah, was the other nursing home. And uh, just I've always I've always, uh, you know, I like working with parents. I think they are the leadership of advocacy and uh just enjoy seeing things get done and like you said at the beginning they only get done with parents they're not getting done with bureaucrats or anyone else and it just amazes me how little how little uh power we have when we have such stories and um you've seen how little that's how how big it's impacted just a few stories some of them have heard and you're seeing legislation that wouldn't have occurred but for a parent telling their story. And so um, just really enjoy that part of it. Like Salad is like like the, the Mac Daddy man of understanding the, the complicated parts of bills and legislators and the ARC, uh, the ARC of Florida is an incredible resource. They have meetings um, is it is it weekly now or 
for on um, legislative stuff. We have meetings all year, three at least yeah. three, all, three. All of the time. There's always yeah. an ARC meeting to join on and um, really good place to, you know, sit at home. Uh, usually I'm eating, turn it off, but just like listening. Uh, they do these. But I feel the I feel we're at the very beginning of the movement. I mean, I really feel like, uh, you know, seeing new people on here that I haven't seen before. That's where the movement happens, and there's going to come a time where we all have to go to Tallahassee together. Uh, that's the only time things have happened to improve things for people with disabilities is when parents and self advocates have uh, shown up and. Uh, you know, I know that uh, I know that we can do a lot better in Florida, and I think this is is going to be this year. I think is going to be looked at as one of our better years. That's my gut feeling right now, and a lot of it is because Pasadomo uh, connected with some families and also with uh, JJ, who has a uh, cerebral palsy, and in fact, right now uh, JJ is getting an award at the Governor's Club. I don't know if, I don't know if you knew that. No. Now he's getting a big award for being uh, 40 under 40 that he's uh, being recognized. Oh, yes, that's Florida wonderful. being one of the, the top people uh, who has under 40 in Florida. And he got that uh, Italian award also. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he's great. I mean, I when I saw him testify, uh, we put it on social media. I mean, this and there's so many more people like him that if they're told of the opportunities to be able to advocate, they're gonna be able to, and we're gonna be able to get a lot done. Um, yeah, our, there's oh, a lot to do. There's a lot to do. No one, no one, not me, not Alan, not dads, not moms, not anyone understands uh, the needs and challenges like like an individual. Uh, and that's really powerful. So, uh, but you know, sometimes you know my kids don't speak, so sometimes we gotta your family's gotta have love around them. But it, our individuals are families. We we are the money shot. Hey, um, hey guys, I, I'm gonna confess, I cannot figure out how to attach this. It doesn't look like it normally does on my Zoom, but I'm gonna ask everybody to do something for me and join our Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook, put your email in the chat, and. We'll get all of this information to you. We do meet, our, our families meet on Fridays. This Friday, we meet at 6 p.m. It's our meetings at 6 p.m. Um, we try to do alternating Fridays. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock for different schedules. Um, but on Facebook and on email, we communicate throughout the week. So that is uh, we put all events good things fun things going around and, and especially anything pertaining to updates uh going on in the state uh it's been a, it's been a really cool experience to have people that understand us in our crazy lives and the, the friendships that have formed through this is really stinking neat um we are all going to tallahassee um, our group is going February 7th, which is Developmental Disability Day in the Capitol. And we will be your first stop if you would li like to join us. Uh, after you get out onto the rotunda, uh, we, the people, will have a table there. And we're, we're there to celebrate. This is Disability uh, Developmental Disability Awareness Day. And everybody needs to be proud of who they are. And so we're going to have a, a great time. We're going to lobby. We're going to go meet with our legislators. And uh, this is an event to show up for. I understand that not everybody can. Um, and that's, you know, I, I get it. I, I couldn't always. Uh, and that's what those the My Story form is. Amanda, can you share the My Story link? <laughs> That this this form, oh, that was the other thing I'm going to do at seven o'clock. I'm out of time. I was going to walk you through how easy it is uh, to, to do the form. Can I do that or are we done? No, you can. Uh, if people want to stick around, if I don't have to rush off, no, absolutely. Okay. If you um, guys have to rush off, uh, throw your email in there, join our Facebook, get connected with us because families, uh, nobody gets us like us. So let's do that. 
I put the link for the forms, the email um, list, and the Facebook group um, link in there. Cool. I'm going to open that link and I'm going to share my screen. Shoot. And find which one I'm sharing. Connect with me in my story. Okay. Oh, look at me. I'm so technical. Do you guys see a blue screen that says connect with me? Okay. So when you go to this link, it asks, what's our first name? My first name's Steph. What county do you live in? I live in Collier County. You put wherever you live. How old are you? Woo! Almost 39, but I'm 38. What are three fun facts about you? Uh, I do love boats. I love boats. I get down with crafting. Uh, let's see a fun fact. Uh, I rap. So three things about me that, you know, might be a talking point of interest. And then this button, you click. And once you click it, and you can see, you can add a photo. We're just going to add this one because it's up. It's not me, but uh, it'll upload this photo. What's your waiver status? So I'm not on the waiver. I'm on the wait list or I am on the waiver. Um, and uh, you click what applies. Who's filling out the form? This is really for me. So, uh, you know, who, who's filling out? So I know who to, to address when I when I email you back these amazing stories. And then this is the part where it says, what suggestions do you have for your legislators on how they can assist you? So uh, I want to see more programs available in Collier County or whatever it is that you need. Uh, my child doesn't have companion services. My my kid is at Loveland living his best life. Thank you so much for supporting the waiver. We actually have a ton of families that have filled out stories from Loveland. Um, so there's that. What suggestions do you have? What's your email? Uh, so my email, we'll do it all together. It's stephanie at autismcollier.com. Bam, you hit submit. And then you you did it. That's it. That those few minutes you did it. And then what is going to happen is I'm going to use my college degree for once in my life. And I'm gonna show you guys what comes out of that. So um I don't know how to hey, do Gary, that. Hey Gary, is that Kyle? Huh? So Gary this, has a guess. Gary has a guest? Yes. Yeah, that's Kyle. Sit down, Hi, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Hey, hey Kyle. Hi. We hey, were man. just talking hey. about you. Hey, dude. Oh, way better. Say hi. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> so Kyle could have his awesome picture right. Can you see my the screen? Yeah, we'll see the file. You do? Oh, too. Yeah. Okay. No, that's not what we're looking for now. Okay. Do you see this screen? Yes. So the and information that you plug in, this is Camden. He's one of our new families. Um, and everything he put comes into this pretty one page. And we make sure to like personalize the, you know, the facts about it. Make it a really personal touch for the legislators. You can print this out and hand it straight to them. You can email this to them. You know, it's there's a lot of power in social media there might be other families out there that don't know that they could they can do this as well and post it on social medias um whatever you're comfortable with but but this is your one pager and it's in less than five minutes so you've got something that looks really really nice um and they've been really effective we have about 200 plus stories right now and about 65,000 people in the state of Florida uh, that need or have services. So we want to, our goal 
and we have what mm, 15 days or so our goal is to to have 65,000 of these stories ready for DD day but as many as we can so if you can't make it to Tallahassee we'll bring you with us we'll make sure that the legislators are aware of your your needs and your your desire to speak and uh I've I've talked enough so I want to thank thank you Becca for for hosting this thank you families for being here um thanks to you thank Steph. you Stephanie I just want to check real quick. Does anyone have any questions before we get off? No, but thank you, Stephanie. You did a great job. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie and Amanda. We really appreciate it. Um, if anyone wants to you know, get in touch, you know, please reach out to them and you know get involved. And um, we will see everybody at a later date. Great. Doodles. Thanks, Becca.